Hello, my name is Diego Lopez, and I'm a mixing and mastering engineer based in Los Angeles, California. And most of the time I'm doing these videos for the Spanish speaking community. But in this occasion, I felt it was really important for me to do an English version of a recent tutorial video that I just did for a, a plugin that's very, very important to me. And that plugin is the Crane Song Peacock. And so the Peacock Vinyl Emulation plugin comes from the mastermind of David Hill, who is one of the most respected uh, gear designers in the industry. And if you've had the chance to know David Hill, you've probably realized that he's going to be one of the smartest persons you're ever going to meet. And so when I first saw this plugin, this interface with the title Vinyl Emulation, my first thought was that it was going to be a plugin that was going to add hiss and pop and crackle to our tracks, that hiss and, and all those sounds that come out of reproducing our vinyl records. And that wasn't so enticing to me, and it seemed kind of weird that uh, Dave Hill would do such a plugin, but I was completely wrong. It's it's nothing like that. It, it Basically what it's doing is it's going to add harmonic content to our tracks. And at least to my taste, it's one of the best algorithms for adding harmonic content. And it does it in a very peculiar way that I think is it's uh, necessary for me to explain it so that you understand how to use this plugin better. So let's get to know this plugin. Let's, let's start to analyze each one of these uh, controls. Let's get to know how they work and what they're gonna do to our tracks. So first of all, we have the control labeled harmonic. And that is basically how much harmonic content you want to add. Anything from zero to a hundred, uh, from no harmonic content to all the way to a hundred. Let's skip uh, dynamic, the control labeled dynamic for now. And uh, now output trim is pretty self-explanatory. You just choose how much level you want going out of your plugin uh, once your signal has been processed by this plugin. If you want to boost it or cut it a little bit, that is your choice. The one labeled dither, we pretty much all have uh, an understanding of what that means, what that does. I do not use it at all uh, for this plugin. I never had the need for it, uh, but it's there in case you think you need it. But now we go over to color and you see all these different options. You have silver, gold, rich, fat, and deep. So all these color options are sort of like uh, algorithms, different harmonic content algorithms. And silver being the one that's going to affect mostly uh, higher frequencies, and deep is going to be the one that's going to affect a wider range of our frequency spectrum, all the way from high frequencies to the very, very deep low end frequencies. But now let's talk about the control labeled dynamic, which is one of the most important ones and uh, very fun to discover uh, what it's really doing to our signal. And so once again, the first time I saw this control, the first time I saw the, the, the word dynamic, I immediately thought about compression and uh, changes in volume, etc., cetera, et cetera. Uh, stuff that probably you th you're thinking about as well. But it turns out that it really isn't related to that. It's not related to compression in, in, in a certain way. Uh, this control, this control label dynamic, basically what it's doing is that it's shifting in time the harmonic content that we are adding to our track. It's basically uh, separating that extra harmonic content that we're adding from the fundamental uh, tone, the fundamental sound that we're running through this plugin. And so to my understanding, uh, what happens when you start adjusting this uh, is, is that you're going to start hearing first the, the harmonic content that you're adding and then the fundamental note. You start separating the two. You start separating that uh, extra little bit of, of distortion, of nice distortion that this plugin is adding from your original sound. And so where does this idea come from? The, the idea of, of shifting in time, of separating the extra harmonic content from the fundamental note? Well, it comes from something uh, known as tracing distortion. And so tracing distortion basically comes from uh, the, um, the stylus head, the reader head uh, on our cartridges when we're re reproducing vinyl records. Uh, if the shape of that head is uh, is different from the one used to cut the record, then you're gonna have tracing distortion. And also, if it's misaligned, you're gonna have a little bit of that tracing distortion or, or better yet, uh, what's known as tracking distortion. So it, 
Again, in essence, it has to do with the shape of the head that you're using to read your vinyl records. So let's go ahead and listen to a few samples so you can start to distinguish and get to know how this plugin is going to affect your tracks. And we're gonna be using a few tracks from uh, a band that I've worked with a lot here in LA, the band Holly. I'm very grateful that they let me use their songs, their tracks to do these tutorial videos. So check them out. And uh, first of all, we're gonna start by uh, listening to a shaker track, a simple shaker track. And uh, more than trying to focus on the musicality of the track, just uh, focus on the big impact that this plugin can have on this shaker sound. Uh, it's gonna be completely transformed. Take a listen. I'm pretty sure you noticed uh, the drastic change uh, when using the plugin Peacock. But this was an extreme case. This, this was just to show you how extreme you can go with this plugin, uh, what it does, and to kind of focus your ear and your attention to all that richness, all that harmonic content that you can achieve by using this plugin. Now let's play around with a few of the controls so you can start to notice what each one of these controls is going to be doing to your tracks. And now I want to show you what plugin can do to a bass track. And uh, you're going to notice that this bass track is, well, lacking bass frequencies. And this was done on purpose because I usually track two bass tracks. One focused more on the high frequencies on the attack of the, of the bass sound. And then the other one focused more on the low end. So in this case, we're just playing the one that's focused on the high end, on the, on the attack of the strings and the detail of the notes of my bass track. But it's sort of a typical scenario in which I would use Peacock. Uh, in this case, for example, if I have a track that is lacking lower end, is lacking low frequencies, and I don't have any other way to to uh, recreate those frequencies. Of course, I would probably reamp the track, but let's assume that we don't have that option and we just need a, a quicker way to solve this problem and take a listen to what Peacock can do to this track.
Now that your ear is sort of adjusted to the sound that you're going to achieve with Peacock, let's go ahead and listen to a few other examples. So at least until now, uh, the reasons why I've been using Peacock are two. Uh, one of them being when I need to add meat, uh, body, low end to a track that is lacking those frequencies or is lacking that, that part of the sound. Uh, but also when I have uh, higher end frequencies, uh, high frequencies that are maybe too piercing or too harsh, if I need to sculpt them a little bit more, uh, remove a little bit of the edge and make them sound a little bit more pleasing, that is when I am going to use use Peacock to add a little bit of that harmonic content to smooth out those harsh frequencies. But now I have a little bit of bad news for all of you. And the first one is that this plugin works with Pro Tools only. It won't work on any other DAW. This is exclusively uh, to be used on Pro Tools. So that is kind of a bummer for a lot of you. Uh, I'm pretty lucky that I get to have it in my Pro Tools rig. But uh, now the other bad news is that it's a pretty expensive plugin. It's not cheap. It's about 450 bucks uh, or so, uh, at least from the time, um, at least when I did this video, that, that was the price that I, that I got to research. But if you have Pro Tools and if you have the means to purchase a plugin, then I cannot recommend it enough. I am very sure that it's going to pay for itself. Uh, very quickly uh, it's going to save you a ton of time trying to solve problems trying to uh, trying to fix tracks that might need a little bit of help like i said in the low end and the mid frequencies to give them a little bit more body to smooth out the edges crane song peacock is perfect for that and it's going to help your tracks enormously so there you have it that was my tutorial of the crane song peacock uh, i am diego lopez thank you for your attention and i'll see you soon